Eastern brethren, a saint we invoke, remembering how he, for one time in history, which had an effect over all history, stood alone almost, aware of what was at stake during the Arian crisis. An occasion for us to ask for his intercession for the Church in the present time. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. He was sent to heal the comfort of God. He Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who raised up the bishops at Athanasius as an outstanding champion of your son's divinity, mercifully crowned that rejoicing in his teaching and his protection, we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next Sabbath, almost 
Because the whole town of Antioch assembled to hear the word of God. When they saw the crowds, the Jews, prompted by jealousy, used blasphemies and contradicted everything Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, you must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. But the Jews worked upon some of the devout women of the upper classes and leading men of the city and persuaded them to turn against Paul and Barnabas and expel them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in defiance and went off to Iconium. But the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to, God. to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, bring out your joy. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If you make my word your own, you will be my disciples, and you will learn the truth, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, 
You, if you know me, you know my father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip? said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask for in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask for anything in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Athanasius contra mundum was the phrase used, Athanasius against the world. It was that a great number of bishops were unaware of what was slipping in. The Arian Compromise was saying, in effect, that there was a time when the Son was not, and therefore he was on the side of the creatures, or some kind of demiurge, not a full part of the divinity. And it was something which was wreaking havoc in that period to the extent that the whole church had to sit on it in solemn council. In 325, Nicaea defined the nature of the Son in the greater context of the nature of the Blessed Trinity, still repeated in its finished form given to us at Constantinople in 381 to this day. The difference being that in the East they kept it in its original form, whereas in the West, initially from Spain and then in Rome itself, the extra clause referring to the Holy Spirit, which proceeds also from the Son, came in and caused this disruption. The importance of the correctness of our Christology is to be seen in the plethora of sects that have come around this issue, even to our day. We forget that the new sects, like the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, are actually non-Trinitarian. Indeed, it was defined very recently by Rome that baptism conferred by Mormons was not valid. We have in common, however, with our brethren who have come out of the Reform in the mainstream Protestant denominations, a complete Trinitarian doctrine and a baptism which unites us to them as brethren in faith. We have, however, in Athanasius another figure who links us to the East for another reason. He is a bridge between East and West in the transmission of what was in his area, Egypt. As Patriarch of Alexandria, he was in close touch with the monastic world, of which Egypt was a major centre. And he was the one who wrote the famous Vita Antoni, the life of St. Anthony, in Greek, of course, but very quickly translated into Latin, and in those two languages, going around the Mediterranean basin like wildfire. And it was in the hands of a very Latin scholar, but it also had an influence on the way in which things were to go in the West itself. One day, Augustine was talking to one of his friends about the way in which two soldiers had suddenly decided to go to the desert and become monks. And they amongst themselves 
were saying to themselves, look how these simple people conquer heaven before we do, and they then undertook a form of monastic life which has come to us, to the rule of St. Augustine to this day. But the influence in all that was the fact that the life of St. Anthony was being read, and that is what was the impetus in the case of these two soldiers. The life was given also to us in the novitiate to read in France, and it was a staple diet, for it was something that one had to be aware of, Anthony being the great patriarch, and being the influence which of course formed St. Benedict as the patriarch specifically of the West. And in that life, as indeed in the succession of events that stem from it, we have our roots, for we cannot get away from the fact that the psyche is always the same, and what has worked will work again if we give it a chance to work. We seem to think that we can conquer heaven and conquer what was accessible to man by shortcut methods. Well, we can't. They took great effort to simplify things and to make it possible for God to reign on every sector. We have blotted out many sectors of our interior life by the complication of our life. We are saved by grace, but we also have to work on that grace in such a way that it is not obstructed. And the whole machinery of working on the soul, which comes from the desert, is something that we cannot ignore or in any way think that we can look down on as something of its time. Three words would perhaps help us. They come straight from the desert and they were revealed to a great monk, St. Arsenius. It was flee, keep silence, rest. Flight for them was geographic. For us it is partly geographic insofar as one has to find a space which is noise free and where God is seen to reign. But it is also flight from what need not be there, noise in particular, and endless communication. Keep silence, not just an absence of emission of words, but also an absence of ingestion of messages and of complication of the mental sphere. We need not be plugged into words all day and all night. Silence is the language of the Blessed Trinity, and we cannot hear it if we are beings of noise. And then keep rest. That quies, quiesce, rest, repose, is the characteristic of the monk who has acquired something of the stillness of the Blessed Trinity. It is easily lost because of our fragility, but the effort therefore has to be not less but more in our time. The forms that monastic life took in the East are quite extraordinary. Dendrites in trees, troglodytes in caves, stylites on rock formations or on some kind of stylus, and so on. Reclusion being the absolute itself, where they were sealed into their cell until death. But if they took it so seriously, it means that the issue is serious. Therefore, to find God with that extraordinary aggressivity of seriousness is to show that we take him seriously. We laugh, perhaps, and yet should we? Are we really great shakes with all our bypass methods?
Do this in memory of me. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family when you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. Then we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. O Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Oh, oh, oh. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be To Agion Oros, Mount Athos, and its equivalent in the Western world, the Carthusian life. There is a place on earth where all the earth afar is held, where man alone may walk. Alone, I say alone, where deeds of worth alone in days are done, where little talk of little matters little may have room, for heaven fills the air, and where the sky is virgin blue, the hue of distant gloom, clouds not the path of angels that draw nigh. O holy land, this is where I would stand, this is where I will stand, for angels too walk here, in where I am, and this the hand that fashioned Athos, quiet Erin knew, and bids me bar a little more their home. From demons that mid seraph wings would roam.